Hi, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. Today's video tutorial is a real life example of how to make a quilt much more easy to piece using electric quilt. I spent last weekend in North Dakota visiting with family and my eight-year-old niece decided that she wanted to make a quilt using my quilt program. And so I helped her, and this was actually the first quilt she created in Electric Quilt. Now this one is pretty complex, and I pretty quickly decided there was no way we were going to make that one. Her second quilt was done with blocks from the EQ library, and it is much more peaceable, but it still had a few challenges that needed to be addressed. As you can see by looking at this quilt, there are some issues that would make this a little bit hard for someone who's not an experienced quilter to piece. So I decided to redo them uh, assuming the person could you do basic foundation piecing. I also decided to do away with the border and replace it with a simple border that would be one inch all the way around. So let me take you uh, through my process to redo these blocks and redo the quilt. So I'm going to start by finding the J in my sketchbook. And I've got a few revisions as well here. So anyway, that's this one here, and I'm going to go ahead and edit it. Now, it looks like the J itself was designed um, the, with the sashing uh, in a 7-inch block. The middle part of the J is basically um, 5 inches, and so I'm going to start by getting rid of the sashing. And I think maybe the fastest way to do it is I'm going to take everything related to the J and move it outside. I'm going to then use the pick tool and select everything in the rest of the block, delete it. And now I'm going to take the J again and I'm going to right click and I'm going to select resize. Now um, if I take 7 divided by 5, it's 140%. So I'm going to change my horizontal and vertical percents in the resize to 140. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to move this in place, and it should snap in place because I have Snap to Grid turned on. Now I am going to go ahead and change the size to 5 by 5 and the snap points to 20 by 20, which will bring me back to every quarter inch. Now to fix this block, really the only thing I need to do is add a line here. So I'm going to use my line tool, and I'm going to do that. And I'm now ready to go to the coloring tab and color it. And I'm not really worried about uh, the colors at this point. I just want to be able to see the J apart from the background. So I can add that to the sketchbook. Then I'm going to view my sketchbook. And let me just take that I. Now that um, is actually good for foundation piecing. I just need to get rid of the sashing borders. So again with the pick tool, picking up the elements I want, move it aside, pick up the rest, delete. Now pick up the eye again, right click, resize 140% OK, move into place. And this one, all I need to do is go to the Color tab and recolor my block and add it to the sketchbook. Mm -hmm. So next is the O, which that's the one that is probably the biggest problem, right? So Pick Tool, I'm going to select that, move it aside. Select everything else, right cl uh, click and do a cut. Select it all again, right click, resize 140%. 
move in place. Now, for this one, there's a lot of changes I need to make this uh, friendly. So rather than sitting and fussing with adult adjusting lines, I am just going to right click on everything and uh, select convert to guides. Now I am going to change it to 5x5 five five and the snaps to 20x20 20 20. and that puts a lot of my intersection, all my intersection points at uh, the quarter inch marks. And so I'm going to start by uh, doing the corners. And I'm just tracing those. Now what I'm going to do is for the top and the bottom, I'm just going to do straight lines uh, connecting those pieces. And then I'm going to do straight lines for the left and the right of this. And then all I need to do is put in the inside corners. And so if I go to the color tab, I have a very nice O that is very peaceable. And if you wanted to see what that looks like, if I do a print foundation pattern, you can see it all fits on one foundation. Isn't that great? So I'll select OK, and I'm going to add that to the sketchbook. But actually, when I did that foundation uh, preview, it actually did that already. OK, back to my sketchbook and the S. Um, and I'm going to right click and clear my guides. Pick tool, select the inside, and then select the outside, and select delete on my keyboard. Select this, right click, resize 140%, move in place, go to the color tab. and add it to the sketchbook. And now I'm going to view my sketchbook and all I have left is the E. And so for this one, I'm going to take the center, move it away. And I'm going to change the block width and height to 5 and the snaps to 20 by 20. And for this one, I need to just draw a line here and here. And I'm ready to add that to the sketchbook mm -hmm. as well. Now, Let's say I want to put some simple borders around each of these, and I just want it to be a one inch border. Now, when I went back to Josie's quilt, this was done with a layout of eight by 10. And so my thoughts were to make the border uh, basically one inch. I'm gonna go ahead and work on block. And I'm going to do a block, new block, easy draw. And I'm going to go make this block 8 by 10 inches. And I'm going to snap it to the inch so I can make that 8 by 10. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw my border. And I just am drawing these at the one inch. And you could pretty much like use a log cabin approach to create that. So I'm going to go ahead and color that. And I'm just going to color the outside, add it to the sketchbook. And now I'm going to use the block serendipity merge block. 
and I'm going to take this and make this the background block and I'm going to go find first my my J and basically it's going to fit inside this block. I'm going to add it to the sketchbook and then I'm going to do the same with each of the other letters. So select the letter, add it to the sketchbook and now I can close. So now I'm ready to create a new quilt. So I'm going to work on quilt I'm going to do a quilt, new quilt, horizontal. I can go ahead and use the layout uh, that we had before and actually it did uh, create that uh, 8 by 10 and 5 blocks. Uh, border, I've got a 1 inch and I'm going to go ahead and add a second one that's going to be 2 and a half inches and I'm just going to type that in because all is clicked. If I click on the slider bar below, it will change all four sides. And so now I'm ready to go to the sketchbook and basically set each of my um, blocks. So, oh, and I need to set the ones with the uh, sashing around them. And then I just need to color the quilt. And I ended up coloring the quilt using some fabrics that I found online that basically look like they were the fabrics used in the quilt. Thanks so much for watching. For additional tips and techniques, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com. In my related blog post, you can also see the actual quilt that was pieced by Tanya, my sister-in-law.